And we are still in the topic of thermodynamics. And in thermodynamics, some concepts are not necessarily intuitive to us. So I'm going to give one more example to the idea of thermodynamic probability. I'm going to give another example here. And I'm going to use pretty much the same example Professor Vamoshi used in his presentation. I'm going to further discuss entropy and relate it to the second law of thermodynamics. And then I'm going to take this second law and use it to explain living systems. And all of this really goes into what is it also explained in the minimals. So hopefully I can, I can take all of this and make sense of it. So let's, let's just talk about thermodynamic probability again. And thermodynamic probability is just the number of microstates, microstates associated or belonging to a macrostate. And just think of it this way. There is an event an event and for order for order to this for in order for this event to take place certain characteristic needs to take place in order for it to rain to rain tomorrow i need to have certain clouds i need to have a specific dew point maybe i need to have a specific temperature a specific temperature and if all of these happen just right if all these microstates occur just right, then I will have this macro state or this event occur. So let's just see. And I've, I've, uh, I've drawn here some sort, some sort of room. And this room doesn't really have a barrier. Particles can move through. I, I'm just using this line. I'm just using this line in the middle to kind of split the left side of the room to the right side of the room. But particles can freely move through every side. And you'll see why I've done this. And I know that in everyday lives, I have particles uh, of gas just freely fusing throughout the room. And you know, because I already said that I can have all these particles, I can have them all on the same side of the room. It is not likely to occur, but I said before it doesn't violate the first law of thermodynamics. That means that if I take a situation in which particles are freely fused throughout the room, and I take them all and I place them all on one side of the room, it is probably not something I am going to observe in everyday lives. And I, I'm going to explain why we're not observing this in everyday lives. Or basically, now I'm going to give the statistic, statistic explanation to why we don't see this happen in everyday lives. And I'm going to keep it simple. Let's just say I have three gas molecules. And I'm asking, what is the probability that all of these gas molecules, all of these ma gas molecules are all going to be on this, this side this side of the room. Meaning, what is the probability that I'm going to observe this particle here, and this particle here, and this particle here as well? So it just so happened that I drew some situations here. I drew some situations. And you can notice that all of these situations are totally random. And the, the one situation in which all of the molecules are in the left side is this. This is the only situation. And you can see that in different situations, you have some on this side, some on this side, maybe, the, maybe all of them on the other side, maybe that one purple one is here, or maybe only that one orange one is here. So what we need to bear in mind is that the macro state or the state, the macro state or the state, the event at which all of them are in one place is characterized by one micro state. I'm going to write this, I'm going to write this down here, the event the event at which all are on the left side, all are on the left side, all on the left side, is characterized by one microstate, one microstate, one microstate. And the number of microstates characterizing an event is the thermodynamic probability. So the thermodynamic probability, or W, of this event occurring is characterized by one microstate just by this microstates. Let's see what happens. We have plenty more events. One, two, three, four, five. We have six. We have seven. We have seven microstates characterizing a different event. So uh, the thermodynamic probability of this happening is one. And the thermodynamic probability of this not occurring is seven. And this is just for three particle. One mole of uh, of an ideal gas, I believe, and one liter of space would uh, would really would really occupy, or rather, one mole is going to occupy 
22.4 liters of space. And you can imagine that this big room is maybe 300 liters in space. So how many moles of gas are in here? There's an, an amazing amount or an awesome amount of particles here. So if I only have one state, maybe when I have uh, 300 moles of ideal gas, I can have 7 million. 7 million microstates. And that is why, really, we do not observe in everyday life the bunching of particles on one side of the room. Because the probability or the thermodynamic probability of it happening is really, really small compared to the probability of it not happening. And that is why, that is why we are observing the diffusion of particles throughout the room because it is more probable. It is more probable. So it's more probable more probable to have gas diffused throughout the room, diffused throughout the room, throughout the room. And now what I'm going to do, and again, this doesn't, having it on one side, having it on one side does not violate, does not violate the law of thermodynamics saying that energy cannot be created or destroyed and just transformed. It's just saying, hey, this is just not very likely to occur. And I'm going to relate this probability, this statistic, to entropy as well. To entropy as well. And entropy basically is saying uh, the disorder of the system. Disorder of system. Entropy is the disorder, disorder of the system. And I already mentioned before that disorder just keeps keeps rising. So if you don't really clean up your room, it's just at random going to seem as if it's getting more messy. And this is what I mean by entropy. Now you can think of it this way. Let's just say that I, I state that the entropy, entropy, rises, entropy rises at random, rises at random, or rises at no expense of energy. That means that I can expect any, at any given point for the entropy of a system to just increase. Every given system is doing, just going to get more and more disordered. And that also means that the more disordered state, I had that room before, a state in which all the particles are in one side is a very ordered state because everything is very neat. All the material is packed in one side. And when all the material is diffused throughout, all the particles diffused throughout, there is a more disordered state. And that is why the most, most disordered state, most disordered state is the most probable. Is the most probable. And all of these um, and all of these statements can appear as relation analysis or true or false questions. Entropy does tend to rise in a system. And entropy, the highest entropy state, is the most probable state. And also the state that is associated with the most, with the most microstates the most microstates is going to be the most probable state that we will observe. So this is just preparing you for different questions that they may ask. And within the uh, spirit of entropy, what I also would like to mention is that entropy, again, is a state function. And it says, at a given point, this is the entropy of my system. It doesn't matter how I got to that entropy, but it, this is the entropy. And I can calculate, I can calculate my entropy in the system if I have the number of microstates. And just to get the intuition behind it, if I have more microstates available, let's just say I have two particles that can be either in one side of the room or on the other side of the room. So now I don't really have plenty of states like the states that I had three particles in. But the more particles I have, the more thermodynamic probability I'm going to have, and the more entropy I'm going to have. So you can imagine that if I have a million, a million molecules of gas here, and they can be in one of other two states, then I'm going to have more assortments. I'm going to have more probable. Um, I'm going to have more different ways to shuffle them around. And the highest disordered state is going to have the highest number of um, microstates. And we already said that. So just to make sure that we're fixing things in an orderly fashion, the more microstates I have, the more microstates I have, the more probable that state is. 
And the more probable and the more microstates I have, the more entropy I'm going to have because there's more ways to shuffle things around. So I can calculate for the entropy, I can solve for it if I have the number of microstates. And it just so happens that I can take I can take Boltzmann's constant and take the natural logarithm of my thermodynamic probability and solve for my entropy. And this is in the minimals. And this is the idea because the more microstates, the more disordered, but also the more probable because the most disordered state is the most probable state. So as long as you understand the relationship between thermodynamic probability and the probability of that macrostate occurring, the macrostate that has the most microstates associated with it, and that entropy is constantly increasing, and entropy is going to keep increasing as the more microstates I have, the more ways I have to shuffle things around, then you probably understand what this is about. And if you don't understand what I tried to explain, don't worry about it. Just remembering this is going to be enough, but hopefully maybe you understood it as well. So we're going to discuss, uh, finish off with the second law of thermodynamics. And uh, I'm going to start, start in this video. I'm going to continue the second law in the next video. But the idea behind the second law is, let's just say, and this is, this is, uh, this is my own example that I find really easy, really easy. If I have a bathtub and I'm saying, I have one faucet here, one faucet here, and I have one faucet on the other side. I have one faucet on the other side. And I pour cool water from this side and warm water, cool water from this side and warm water from this side uh, simultaneously. Well, I know that what I'm going to observe is a bathtub that is filling that is going to have a uniform temperature. It's going to kind of equilibrate, you can say. But what I wouldn't have, what I wouldn't have is a state in which I'm going to have warm water on the right side and cool water on the left side. Why would I not see this? And we already discussed it. I'm not going to see it because this event, this event is characterized by a very small, a very small thermodynamic probability. Or it is more probable, the highest, the highest thermodynamic probability is the event at which it is all uniform throughout. All the cool, all the cool water and all the warm water have have fused, you can say, throughout the bathtub. So this is the more probable event. And this is basically saying entropy increases uh, uh, steadily. Entropy increases steadily because it is just more probable. And this is just repeating everything back and forth, I know. But it's kind of important to have an intuition. This is an idea of why why entropy keeps increasing. And this is basically the second law of thermodynamics. Entropy is going to steadily increase and increase and increase. Or the entropy, entropy of the universe increases. This is the essence of the second law of thermodynamics. We're going to take the second law and apply it to living systems. And what do I mean? What do I mean? Well, I know that I have a person, which is a living system, but a living system is a fairly ordered structure. I have bones, and I have tissues, and muscles, and they're all very orderly. And I have specific cells that differentiate into specific tissues. And everything's really, really nice and orderly. And you can say, this is weird. I, I just told you that entropy ke keeps increasing. So how come uh, living systems get more and more ordered? So essentially, if I take a look at this living system, which is very, very neat and ordered biologically, it's not at random, then its entropy is going down. That means it gets more ordered. It's not getting more disordered. So how do I reconcile this with the second law that says entropy will always go up and up and up? Whereas I can see, let's say I have this little bunny here, and I know that this little bunny is a very ordered biological system. So its entropy is going down. How, how can I reconcile the second law with living systems? And this can actually be reconciled if I take the whole world the bunny is living in, and I can take the bunny as a separate system, and I can say these two, these two have a certain relationship between them. These two, if I add them up, then the entropy is still going to keep increasing, which means that the entropy of the bunny 
the entropy of the bunny, added with the entropy of the environment of the bunny, those will keep increasing. Those will keep increasing. So even though the bunny is getting more ordered, its environment is getting more disordered. So if you combine the two, you realize that the entropy of the universe as a whole still increases. And what we are doing really is if this person is eating, eating a hot dog, he's eating, a, that doesn't look very good, but if this person is eating a hot dog, then you can expect that later he's going to go to the bathroom and he's going to maybe uh, you know, maybe just uh, toss some excrements into the bowl and he's going to poo. And when he poos, and he's basically throwing disorder into the world. So our excretions and secretions are basically, are basically, uh, are basically causing the, the rise of entropy in the world. So you can say that living systems, living systems and the universe have a relationship. And you can ask, just like in the minimal, how can the second law of thermodynamics, saying that entropy rises, be applied for living systems? Well, it can be applied if the living system and its environment is addressed to as one isolated system, as the universe. Saying even though the bunny of the entropy is going down, the entropy of the entire universe is still rising, which means the entropy of the environment is rising. That means that this law still holds true. So the bunny may get very, very ordered, but the bunny is going to take a dump in the forest, and that dump is going to have very high entropy. It's going to make the environment more messy. So this is the idea of, of entropy and the second rule of thermodynamics and living biological systems. And if you understand this, you're in good standings. Hopefully you have found this helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.